Yeah. Oh, and I have my uh, my COVID booster today, my third shot. And every, so far, everybody I've talked to has had the third shot. It's gotten sick from it. Oh, I didn't know you were getting booster. Dude. Yeah, so if, as long as you're six months away, six months out from your second shot, uh, if you're over 65 or teachers, okay, okay can get it. Uh, but Dr. Wall's um, uh, wife is in healthcare, and she had it. <laughs> Clearly, she was on death's door for the shot. Oh, uh, yeah, I had, well, yeah, so I think the only one they're giving boosters for is the, um, what's the one I had? Pfizer, yeah, Pfizer, because that's the only one that's FDA approved or whatever now. So yeah, I had no effect from the first one. Second one, I was maybe tired for a day, uh, but everybody, literally everyone I've talked to has had the third one is like I had 102 fever, would prefer to have COVID <laughs> this type, type, type of situation. So we'll see, it could be entertaining. Um, all right, so we weren't doing all of shunting yard. We were just doing um, the building the output queue, correct? Okay, but not processing the output queue. Okay, and we already wrote, let me, let me, Hopefully it saved my projects. Something. Aha. Perfect. All right. So we already built our. Uh, oh, didn't we build it? Oh, yeah. This is not the right one. Oh, hold on. I have it in the, the homework assignment, this guy. So what's happening? Do I do I create it outside of my account? You might just forget to hit save. Maybe. Well, no, because like see here, it's like saying, you know, fork this. I, I wonder, I wonder if I'm logged in with like two different accounts to online GDB. Yeah. And it depends on which of these uh um tabs, like I'm logged in <laughs> as different people. All right. But fork this now lets me make changes, right? All right, perfect. So this should be a working input queue. You can do it. While it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead into, okay, so there's my input queue. So now we wanna start processing it. All right, so inside of Shunting Yard, we've already created our input queue. So now we wanna go ahead and create a couple of other animals. We're gonna have our um, uh, op stack, and then we're also gonna have our output queue. So these guys are both gonna be linked lists of strings. Op stack and output queue all right and we'll go ahead and build those guys so i don't forget so inside of cpp say this op stack is equal to a new link list of strings this output queue is equal to a new link list of strings. Okay. Um, but we don't need to do anything with those here in the constructor otherwise, other than just set them up. All right. So then inside of shunting yard, we probably want to go ahead and um, have a function to process um, that. Um, uh, input queue. Now we could actually make that a private function because I, I, in my mind, I'm kind of thinking that out here, when we say shunting yard, and then we say, uh, you know, maybe sy dot show answer or something like that, it's just already going to have the answer. So just creating this thing inside of shunting yard, that constructor should go through that whole process of doing all the magic. 
So we can make most of our functions private functions since they're only going to be used inside of uh, shunting yard. So I'll put that just like we did here with the is operator and that kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a function in here um, called process. Um, let's just call this guy process. Well, let's call this process input queue. All right, and that guy's going to take no parameters because this object already knows about the input queue. He's got access to that uh, that private variable. So let's go build this guy. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and make sure we call this function. From our constructor so now process the created input queue. And that's what this guy will do so this guy is going to go and perform all that stuff that we were looking at in here for the rules of following shunting yard all right so we're going to start peeling stuff off our input queue as long as there's stuff still in our input queue and let's see does my input queue have Yeah, we have a git count. So as long as we still have things on our input queue, we need to do something with them. Okay. So while this input queue git count is greater than zero, as long as I still have stuff on my input queue, I need to do something with that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull a value off of my input queue. And these guys come off as string nodes, right? And if I remove front, he comes off as a string, okay? And then I'll actually remove him. So we'll create a string temp here. And let's make sure that I have access to strings. I do. All right, so I have my string temp that I'm going to use. So the very first thing I'll do here is I'll set temp equal to this input queue get front. So we'll go ahead and extract the value off of uh, that guy. And now just for testing purposes, so we don't go too far in here, when I call process input queue, I wanted to go ahead and just spit out all my tokens. Let's just make sure that up to this point, I haven't introduced anything evil. All right. So this guy's going to go through my uh, input queue, peel off everything from the front, display it, and it's going to do that until we're done showing all of our things. Um, so this display thing is no longer going to make sense, but we should see all of our pieces. There's no git front. What was it called? Oh, sorry. Remove front. All right, so evidence, we have all our individual tokens being peeled off there. Now we just need to decide what to do with these dudes. Okay, so we need to have a mechanism for uh, determining if there is 
And hold on, was there somebody we need to get into the queue or something? You know, I thought I saw stuff just pop up on the screen. Uh, we need to have a mechanism for determining whether a specific token is a number. Okay. Now let's look at what we currently have. So inside of shunting yard, we have something called is operator that we pass a char to. All right. But now we want to have whether or not something is a number. Bool is number. This guy will take a string as a parameter because we need to we need to be able to throw a token at this guy and say, is this a number? Because if it's a number, then we just trivially add it to the end of our output queue. Okay. So we're gonna go and write this dude. All right, so to determine if something is a number, we need to be able to go through every single character of S and it needs to be one of my digits, right? All right, so we could write is digit as well, but I'm not sure that's gonna be useful anywhere else in our program. So really we want to say, I wanna go through print i is equal to zero, i is less than s dot length, I plus plus, and each time through, we want to ask the question if S at bucket I, that particular character is not equal. You know what? This is going to be pretty. Uh, eh, we'll just write it to be quick and dirty. All right, so if that guy is not equal to a zero or this guy is not equal to a one or this guy is not equal to a two or this guy is not equal to a three or this guy is not equal to a four or five, Six, seven, eight, nine. So if anything is, if any of that is true, if S at bucket I is anything other than zero through nine, then I know I'm not dealing with a number. I found something else that's not a number. So I'll return false. Go ahead. Uh, could you like, I don't know if you could have done this, but like, couldn't you have done like is op? You could have run is operator <clears> and then assuming that if it's not operator, you kind of see the numbers. We probably could have. Yeah. Uh, so what he's suggesting is is <coughs> Since is op already checks for things that are operators, if we find something that is an operator, we're, we're not a number, right? So you could have done that. And this guy pretty much asked something pretty similar. Um, maybe the danger, is it really a danger? It's probably not. Because it's, it's fair in this particular problem to say, if it's not an operator, it must be a number. I think that's that's fair. All right, so if I hit any of these minefields here, I'll return false, wasn't a number. If I get through the entire minefield, I'll return true. This guy was a number. Okay. So let's go and make sure that we're handling this. Go ahead. If it's not equal to zero and it's not equal to one, oh, it should be. Mm. 
needs that needs to be true for all of them. It's not equal to any of those guys. All right, so now we have his number. Let's go back to process input. We have temp. Let's just ask the question if this is number temp. Uh, actually, why don't we do this? And we'll say this output queue add end temp. And then if in the end we say output queue display, this should just show us our numbers. So we'll go through our while loop looking at every single token and if this guy is a number, add it to the output queue. We're ignoring operators for the moment. And then we're just testing our output queue to make sure that it's filled up with 123, 14, 28, and two. One, 23, 14, 28, and two. So we are accurately detecting numbers, all right? else we must be looking at an operator so if we're looking at an operator we got to do some stuff right so if we go down here because we've said our operators follow certain rules um this was yeah so for something like this this kind of covers our whole gambit right um if we're looking at let's see i want to deal with our special cases first all right so if we're looking at an opening parenthesis what do we do? We just push it onto the stack, right? We don't have to check anything special. If that guy is an opening parenthesis, boom, it's on the stack. And one thing I'm interested in real quick, and I don't know the answer to this at the moment, but we will find out real quick here. String S is equal to We use the double equal sign to compare strings. Oh, that's this guy needs to be at the very least, it needs to be flagged as being a string type. So that is true. That is false. Okay, so it does allow us to compare strings with a double equal sign. Okay.
Oh, I wasn't even in the right. All right, we're shutting this guy. <laughs> you can't just have things floating around out there. Okay. Must be looking at an operator, so we're going to ask the question. If temp is equivalent to, and it looked like we didn't actually have to cast it to a string, but I'm going to cast it to a string as a uh, um, remembrance thing. If it's equal to the string, open parenthesis, if that's a true statement, then we just push this value onto our op stack. Op stack push temp. And did we write push or do we just call it add, uh, add uh, front? Yeah, we called it add front. Okay. So we add and remove front. That's our push and pop for our op stack. So if it's an opening parenthesis, we do that. Else if, go back to, this guy. If it's a um, carrot, something to the power, we also just push it, right? We don't ask any special questions. We're allowed to just put uh, those guys. So we can even say this. We can say, or if temp is equal to the string version of the carrot if either of those guys is true we just push it all right else if let's see what happens um with the if temp is equal to the string version of the closing parenthesis all right so let's handle that alternative to the opening parenthesis next all right, so if I see a closing parenthesis, now I need to start clearing my op stack until I hit the corresponding opening parenthesis, right? And just adding it to the end of my um, we're gonna go ahead and just put it in here string. We'll call this guy temp op. <clears throat> this guy will be equal to this op stack. Remove front. While temp op is not equal to the string version of the opening parenthesis. So as not as long as I haven't found the corresponding opening parenthesis to this closing parenthesis, I want to go ahead and add it to the end of my output queue. Like that. All right. Now, and then I want to get the next dude. 
as soon as I did read in that opening parenthesis, that opening parenthesis, we don't do anything uh, um, uh, special with that. That doesn't go on to our uh, output queue. It just gets burned. Okay. So as soon as we hit here, we have cleared the op stack up until the corresponding opening parenthesis. All right, and that's all we do when we see a closing parenthesis. That's the response to a closing parenthesis is clear the op stack until we find the corresponding opening parenthesis. All right, so if it's not an opening parenthesis and it's not a power and it's not a closing parenthesis, it must be an operator, it must be one of the other guys. And that's when we have to ask that special question, right? So else, we must be looking at a normal math op. All right. So if we're looking at a normal math op, that that is that is what's currently inside of temp. It's one of our math ops. Then we want to find out: Am I allowed to push this onto the op stack? And under what condition are we allowed to push it on the op stack? That is, if it's more powerful than the thing that's currently at the top of the op stack, right? Otherwise, we have to start clearing the op stack until we get to either an empty op stack or we get to something that this is more powerful um, than. And it is more powerful, not at least as powerful, correct? We can get to see that example up here. Yeah, the minus couldn't go on top of the plus because it wasn't uh, more powerful than it. It was equal uh, to it. All right, so we probably want to get the, um, maybe write a quick little function that just gives us a value for the power of an operator. Would be helpful. So we'll put this in shunting yard, int get power of op takes a, String op as a parameter. Go ahead and write this guy in here. Okay. Now we know we're only going to actually use this for. Um, Let's see, we'll only actually use it for multiplication and division and addition and subtraction. It's not, we, we're not interested in the powers associated with parentheses and we're not interested in the uh, powers associated with um, uh, the power. Correct. Is there always the last thing that'll come off? because it's right to left for those. Yeah, so really we only care about uh, um, addition and subtraction and multiplication division. So if op is equivalent to just 
string plus or op is equivalent to string minus what is it, return two. I forgot what the power was for those. Doesn't really matter as long as they're relative to each other. Yep, two. And then the other ones are three. Else if, and I'm actually going to be specific, even though we know what will never get called under those circumstances. It must be our other kind of operator, which has a power of four, but we've already handled that in a special case. So it's never actually, we'll never actually hit that. This just makes the code clearly show that addition and subtraction are less powerful than division and multiplication. All right, so that's get power of op. All right, so what we need to do is as long as the top of the op stack is more powerful then the current thing we're trying to add, we need to pop off the op stack. And actually, I think that will be true. It will be true for, it is possible that we would hit this guy. Must be a, one of those dudes. Because if I have multiplication and I'm trying to put it on top of this guy, that guy should pop off. If you happen to have a function that operates that way. So it is possible that this would get called if I'm trying to um, get the, the value of the thing that's at the top. All right, so as long as the thing at the top of the op stack um is stronger than the thing we're trying to add we need to pop off the op stack and add it to the end of our output queue now we do need to make sure do i have the ability to peak i currently don't so we probably want to add the ability for us to peak at the top of this guy so we're going to say string peak. For our linked list of strings, we'll go and implement that. This guy will return head. get payload and we are assuming that it's uh um that head is something so if we say if this head is not equal to null do this else have it return the empty string or something like that. Actually, I think we can just do C out. Can't. Peak. The empty list. All right, so we added the peak ability to that guy. So now inside here, we must be looking at uh, a normal math operator. So we'll say while this 
get power of op, this op stack peak. So while the power of that guy is greater than get power of op temp. So if the thing currently at the top of our op stack has a stronger power than the thing I want to add, I need to remove it from the op stack and add it to the end of our output queue, then try again. So this pops off the op stack and adds it to the end of the output queue. Then we'll try again to see if the guy who's currently at the top of the op stack is more powerful than the guy I'm trying to add. And we'll just keep popping off there until I finally get a situation where he's not more powerful. Uh, let's see. I actually want to say more powerful or equally powerful. Right, because tie we we need to clear even even ties, so not just more powerful, but at least as powerful, greater than or equal to. All right, so as soon as we get here, the op stack is good to allow us to add the new op. So we'll say this op stack add front temp and we're done there. All right, so we do that for all of the elements in there. Now we've run out, so once I hit here, we have run out of input elements so we need to finally clear the op stack so while this op stack get count is greater than zero i'll do that same ninja move i'll add to the end of my output queue the pop of my op stack Keep doing that over and over and over again until I've cleared that guy. I can't peek the empty list. It's got to be in my peak code. Well, not my peak code, but where I'm using peak. Peak. Stack remove front. Make sure this is running at some point. Oh, it doesn't let me see what I just did.
This is strings 23. I know we're out of time. That's fine. Oh, is it because of I'm not actually returning? It's got to be in here with our peak. So we'll come back on uh, Wednesday. We'll uh, finish fixing this up. We'll walk through how uh, um, we actually process the output queue. Uh, and we'll get that done and we'll start talking about a um, um, uh, nonlinear linked data structures, B trees, uh, ABL trees, graphs, things like that. All right, so no homework for Wednesday. And I'll debug this for a few minutes and make sure the code's in a decent stable spot. But I'll see everybody on Wednesday.